Hello family, this is Pastor Andre Osborne and I'm coming to you with day four of our amazing Passion Week devotional. Uh, we've been focusing intently on the seven days that changed everything. Of course, we know, uh, we found out this week that a lot can change in seven days. Uh, we've come through uh, Palm Sunday, Monday, a busy Tuesday, a silent Wednesday, now to what we describe as Monday, Thursday. The word Monday just means command. Uh, and this is the day that we commemorate the new command that Jesus gave to his disciples. Of course, we know uh, the central command. He says, a new command I give to you, love one another. Uh, this is the command that Jesus gives. And he says that this is the distinguishing factor of my disciples. People will know that you belong to me, not by your dress or your speech, uh, but they will know that you belong to me by your love. Now, the, here's the amazing thing. Jesus demonstrates what it is to be his follower because as they are sitting at the Passover meal, Jesus rises and he takes up the towel, the Bible says. He takes up the towel and he begins to wash the feet of the disciples. Now, this is amazing because to be the foot washer in a home was to assume the lowest servant role in the home. And so Jesus was not just demonstrating being a servant, but Jesus took the lowest role of servants. Out of all the servants, the one who washed the feet of the guest uh, and of the homeowner would be the person of lowest standing. Uh, he would wash, he or she would wash the feet uh, that had been through mud and dirt and sometimes been through feces. This was the lowest servant role. And yet Jesus washes the feet of the disciples and says, you go and do likewise. If you want to be my followers, if you want to be my disciples, then the greatest of you have to learn to be the lowest of you. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing because Jesus demonstrates service not by what he gets rid of, but by what he puts on. He puts on a towel. And this wouldn't be the last time he would serve. He would serve humanity yet again, not by taking up the towel, but by taking on our sins. This is what Philippians says to us, that Jesus demonstrated what it was like to be humble by emptying himself of being God and taking on the servant's form by becoming man. He put on flesh and took on our sin and took our sin to the cross. Well, while Jesus is seated there at the Passover table, he says, he says, it's been my desire. I've had great desire to eat this meal with you. And, and a part of this is because Jesus now takes this opportunity to establish with his disciples what this meal really signifies. They're eating the customary Jewish Passover. But Jesus says, I've had great desire to eat this Passover with you. It's not the first Passover he celebrated with his disciples, but this is the first Passover that they would celebrate in this way. Uh, no, this time they would not celebrate over the lamb and over the bitter herbs. This time he would take bread and say, this is my body that's broken for you. And this is the New Testament in my blood. That's what this wine represents. It represents the new covenant that I'm establishing with my blood. And as often as you do it, you do show forth or proclaim my death until I come again. He says, here it is. I'm going to give new significance to this. In other words, saying that every other Passover that was celebrated has foreshadowed this moment. You do realize that the Passover that was celebrated in Exodus was celebrated because a lamb was slain and the blood of the lamb protected those who had blood on the lintel and the doorpost of their home. Now Jesus says, let me give you the full meaning of what Passover represents. I am the lamb who was slain so that you would be covered under my blood. And so now when you look at this meal, you just need to take bread and remember that my body was broken for you. 
And you need to take this cup and every time you drink it, you remember that my blood was shed for you. That's what Jesus invites us to in this moment. And I, I, I pray, brothers and sisters, that you will celebrate the significance of this special day. That Jesus gave his life for you and for me. And after the supper, after the supper, Jesus would go out. He would go out to the Mount of Olives to a place called Gethsemane, a place called Olive Press. And it was there in Gethsemane that Jesus made the decision to surrender to the will of God. He says, Father, if there's another way, let this cup pass from me. In other words, if there's a way around suffering, a way around separation from you, a way around having to take on your wrath, if there's a way around this bitter cup that I've got to drink from, then let that be, but not my will. Here's the ultimate place, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus shows us that sometimes being obedient to the will of God takes sacrifice. It may even take some suffering, but Jesus embraces the will of God because the will of God for him dying for our sin opened up the door of blessing for us. Now we can live and have life eternal. I don't know what God's requiring of you in this season, but I pray like Jesus that you would surrender to God's will for your life, that you'd surrender to God's will, that you'd surrender to God's way because there's a blessing on the other side of surrender. For Jesus, that blessing was obtaining you and me. He purchased us with his blood. He died because he saw us behind his death. I want you to see that there's a blessing on the other side of the sacrifice and the suffering that you've had to go through. This is day four of Passion Week.